I lead our global academic and nonprofit team within our social impact organization. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys today. I'm the chairperson of transportation design at the undergraduate level at the College for Creative Studies. I was working in the industry as car designer, mostly for Ford and for Honda. I'm a, uh, an associate professor with uh, entertainment arts here at uh, CCS. Uh, I'm also the director of game. I've worked uh, quite extensively with film production, motion graphics, animation, and some programming as well. For folks who don't know very much about CCS, can maybe one of you tell us what kind of sets you apart from some of the other schools that are out there? is really a unique school. We're located in Detroit, Michigan. We have a lot of creative talent located near and around our campus. We also have, you know, a, a tremendous amount of influence with the the automotive industry. A lot of our students, uh, you know, choose CCS because we do have a, a smaller student body that allows us to focus directly on individualized attention. Great. It sounds like your students have an amazing opportunity. Can you tell us a little bit about how you tend to work with industry partners and what particularly has been exciting about working with Unity? Typically, what we get is the automotive industry, they come to us looking for future talent. They normally would give us, you know, a brief such as what do you think the next Corvette might be? So the briefs can be really broad ranging. But this one was very unique in the sense that we were we were not working with an OEM manufacturer, we were working with Unity. So it gave us the opportunity to collaborate with Entertainment Arts using the Unity platform because virtual reality and all the um, sort of advanced graphics that Unity enables is really becoming a standard uh, within the industry very, very quickly, not only for, for developing interactive UI, UX experiences uh, for actual vehicles, but also for advertising, promoting, and even internally selling ideas with a specific storyline to senior management. The story behind a vehicle can really make or break whether or not that vehicle is going to go to production. When the designers have the opportunity to really visualize their ideas in real time, in an animation, working with visualization designers, uh, to tell the stories, it really has a huge impact. Non-designers, you know, that hold purse strings in these in <laughs> really large companies because it, it's really billions and billions of dollars of investment in order to launch a new vehicle. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program specifically and about the Vehicles of the Future project? When you open something up to the extent that you're asking students, well, what will the future look like? What will people be like? And what sort of vehicles will they need? Then they really have to open their imaginations and, and think forward and extrapolate, okay, here I am now. And what is going to be a potential speculative reality in 10, 15, or 20 years? We look at the process of developing and designing. We do, you know, absolutely start with a traditional kind of concept of sketching and actually ideating out on paper first. But our students really quickly move into the actual 3D modeling process. And one of the awesome things about using Unity is that they can get into the process and ideate quicker. So the more that they're able to kind of get into the into the software, into the game engine, they're able to design, develop, see that end product really quickly, and then turn it around and go through that ideation process all over again. If something is clicking or something is working towards you know the desired outcome, they're able to see that really fast. And I think that's changed a lot of the way that our students look at the ideation process. They're no longer so worried about, oh, I have to have the perfect idea right now. They can get in and see what it looks like through various methods within Unity to kind of get a sense of color, material process, what materials are being applied, how the uh, simple things like game mechanics, even if they're working on you know some type of game uh, application. So they're able to ideate a lot faster and it leads to a better end product in the long run. As you think about real-time 3D technology being a part of this process, can you talk a little bit how that's impacted the way that you teach and the way the students are learning? We have four tracks, four emphasis within our department. We have film, animation, game, and concept design. One of the really interesting things is that across all of those tracks, we see that iterative process and we see real-time 3D really starting to become something that is taking a forefront in the way that our students are starting to develop, not only from an ideation standpoint, but a storytelling standpoint as well. We look at animators and the way that they're able to do real-time motion capture, you know, actually see the end result within minutes or 
or actually real time as they're actually uh, capturing their motion. The idea of real time and, and just being able to see these things process as you're creating is really, really exciting for our students. It's amazing to me as an instructor to see the process over the last five years, just powerful these tools have gotten. Without really knowing it, the industry had been preparing itself for COVID-19. How do you see the curriculum then, given this connection with industry and what you're seeing with real-time technologies and industry, sort of helping students in terms of their future careers and getting those jobs? My philosophy is to offer a lot of different possibilities. Students that are more inclined to the storytelling aspect, we're offering, you know, real-time animation software for them. And other students, you know, they might just be much more of the artist. And while they're skilled with the digital modeling software and things like that, what they really want to do is, you know, massage the clay surfaces in the studio, you know, in the traditional way. And that's good because we need more diversity in multiple different you know, ways diversity can occur in the industry because it, everybody's got their own interests and skill sets and it really creates a vibrant workplace. Now everything happens on this one kind of pipeline that's really because of the, uh, the speed and power of what we, can, what we can do with the game engine software. So that for us is really exciting too. For us at Unity, we really believe in empowering creators and knowing that the world is going to be a better place with more creators in it. How do you see the next generation of creators really transforming industries as they graduate, you know, gaming as well as industrial um, or animation or film industries? Like, how do you see that future? It's going to become very apparent how quickly they can get the job done. Uh, versus the length of time that has been sort of traditional, which is like three to five years to do a car from a blank piece of paper to a vehicle on the road. So if you can iterate and evaluate and select, you know, you can you can shrink the design part of, part of that, which is, you know, normally two and a half years down to a much shorter period. And I think that's already having an impact. So there's definitely that. And then with the ease with which students can explore ideas, you may see some really creative proposals as well, just because where one idea might have been too wild, too risky, too radical, to take it you know, to an, a, another level of investment as one of two or three themes, now it's nothing. You know, you're really not costing the company any money to instead of have three themes, you know, with teams of clay modelers and digital modelers, now the designer can do it himself. And you can have 10 themes to choose from or 15, depending on how many designers you have. So we could see some really creative, unexpected uh, solutions, I think, and uh, more quickly to market. So I think one of the great things that we have is that our students are able to start looking at the process of innovation early on while they're in school. And through tools that they have available, um, there's just a tremendous amount of educational options available through the Unity community, which is really awesome. We can see these students kind of gaining that technical knowledge before they leave. And then as soon as they get into the industry, we're just starting to see that, you know, snowball. They're learning how to learn early on and they're taking that technical prowess to the next level as soon as they get out there. And I think especially for emerging technologies like augmented reality, virtual reality, those things are just going to start to pile as well as they uh, move into the industry. Do you see CCS continuing to teach with real-time 3D in the future? From my point of view, absolutely. It's, it's uh, become a new standard. Like I say, we're always going to want, ultimately, the transportation design people will interact with a, a physical artifact of some kind. And so the world is going to to remain physical, right? But the extent to which we can explore new ideas at a, at a rapid pace is really unbeatable. Looking at what we can accomplish just from a four-year kind of exploration of Unity with our students, it's something that our students are expecting. There's really no alternative. When a student comes to CCS to start looking at developing a career in the game industry, they have to be versed in the game engines. They have to understand the pipeline and they have to understand the process. So for us, just the fact that uh, that unit is such a powerful tool for us, it's such an easy tool for our students to jump into, gain the knowledge quickly, understand the backbone and the pipeline of how the game engine works. 
It's something that we could not possibly do without um, at this point in our curriculum. And in fact, that's something that we're working on every semester. We look at our curriculum and, and, and try to figure out the best ways to move forward. And just the ability to look at real-time 3D across the board, not only for classes that are specific within game development or game design, but also, as I mentioned before, film, animation, concept design, all of those tracks, all of those emphasis absolutely would be looking at real-time 3D, uh, things like the Unity uh, platform that would give us the ability to have that quick iteration, have the ability to create powerful end products and really uh, work through the storytelling in a just a completely different way uh, than we ever have in the past. So 100% the, the curriculum will include real-time 3D, especially through the, the Unity platforms. It's amazing the talent that they're able to cultivate and grow through your programs. Thank you, Paul and David, for spending today with me. I really appreciate your time. Well, thank, thank you, you. Nuj. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much.